Hey Groovers, uh, welcome to another episode of Guitar Mag Weekly. And uh, this week to make up for last week's absolute mess of a magazine, UK Guitarist Magazine, which, you know, like I said, I, I think I've got another uh, two, it's like four of those to do. Ugh, not looking forward to them. But to make up for it, this one, classic. I don't know how many times I read this one. This is from May 1990. Nuno, Red Beach, Richie Kotzen. Um, I was a big Richie Kotzen fan from the get-go with his first album. And I wasn't really a big um, Shred fan. I didn't really listen to uh, Shred music. But I liked his stuff. And the second album that he did with his vocals, he's talking about in here, in this uh, article. And... Um, it's interesting that he would end up going on to really do a shitload of singing, and he's a fantastic singer. He sounds like a bit like Chris Cornell sometimes. Don't, doesn't sound like he's trying to sound like him. He just has that range. Fantastic. And uh, Mr. Big and the Seattle. So 1990 and Guitar World, we're, we're doing all right already with that uh, Seattle stuff. And Stevie Ray Vaughan's Tightrope Transcription. Let's see how this compares this transcription to last week's one, which was absolutely horrendous. Michael Lee Thurkins, open it up. You got Mick Mars, looking pretty slick there, Mick. Looking real good. Ozzy, Frank Gambali, and uh, in the issue you've got Gatemouth Brown, the Seattle thing. The three fucking Glamour Twins there, and a uh, Mr. Big article. So let's get into it. And there we go. Back with a bandit again. I'm seriously going to have to get mine looked at. Excellent Marshall ad. Notice the ads already. How they don't look busy, and like they're going to send you into some catatonic state just from looking at them. I mean, there's some ads there, but they're getting them at the start of the... So this is where you want them, at the start of the mag. Now look, sounding board, this is where the letters are, right at the start. Unlike those idiots last week, hidden at the back. Some more ads. They're, they're, they're good looking ads. I always liked this part of Guitar World. This is always cool. Because sometimes you'd find out about people you didn't really know about, what have you. I only got this guy's album in the last few years. I bought it on tape actually. Michael Fath. Anyway, Stevie Ray and uh, Joe Satriani doing the, the unplugged thing. Bit of hardcore 24 hours a day right there ladies and gentlemen. Cool looking straps. Uh, they might be giants. Small article. Guitar Sam. That was a good card in that. Hopefully you can uh, zoom in on that and read it. Robbie Krieger. Or Krieger. However you want to say it. That's his name. Lonnie Vincent from the uh, Bullet Boys there. That's a, look, that's a fantastic. What a great ad, man. Excellent ad. Gatemouth Brown. Look at this dude, man. Killing it. Nice ads again. See how the colours are kind of similar even? and uh. Anyway, Michael Lee Ferkins. Even this is kind of going with this here. Now, I don't know if that's a fluke that that's happened. Now, I've just noticed all that. But even those are kind of similar. Robin Trower article. That, that, this was a good read, actually. I've just read this, reread this one again. Look at Kirk Hammett. Look at how young he looks. He looks like a boy. He just looks like a real youngster. 1990. 1990. When was it? May 1990. I'm trying to think of where I was working. Then I'd left school only about in the last uh, seven months or so. That's a good Nuno ad. Good Tesla ad too. Now you got the young guns. 
Look at that, it's a good one. It's an excellent double page one. There's Mr. Perfect Pitch. He was around for a while ago. He didn't mind spending a bit of money, that dude. Um, again, nice base head. There's a good little article here about tapping. I, I reread this again today. I'm not, I've not, I've never been a tapper. I'll do it for my own pleasure. I never really do it in front of people. But um, I've always liked it. I think because it was so popular at the time, I got turned off tapping just because it was literally everywhere. Everyone was doing it all the time. But it makes sense when you think about it. It gives you extra notes, just like a uh, piano. There's that classic ad again for uh, Mike Varney. That was a great ad, that one. Good Steinberger ad. Oh, sorry, it's a Honer ad. Charvel ad. See how this is just a pleasure to look through, as opposed to that other pile of garbage. Um, that's a that is a really cool Kramer ad there. Really cool. Always dug that. I always would look at that for a little bit longer than most ads. Just great looking ad, great looking guitars. Everything about that's just good layout and everything. Billy Sheehan. Ripping it up, no doubt. Vesta. That looks too bad, those guitars. They look kind of like they're carvings or something. There's Jason Becker there. Kirk Hammett. Look at Paul Gilbert. He virtually looks like he's just left high school. Class of 89, Vito Brutter, Marty Friedman. Who's this guy? Jamie Glazer. Oh, from Jean-Luc Pontaire. There's a Warrant, boys. These guys always had cool guitars made for them by uh, BC Rich and Ibanez. They always had heaps of great custom guitars, these dudes. I hope they didn't sell them. I have to sell them all for next to nothing. That would be pretty sad to find out. This was always around, the old Metal Method ad. Doug Marks was there. I think he's got his um, YouTube channel kicking. Ovations. Guy Man Dude. What a name. Guy Man Dude. And we're back into the reviews at the end here. All right, you just kind of flow in the old guitar world and guitar for the practicing musician, better known as guitar, the American one. Here we go. A bit of a shout out to some hometown heroes. If you uh, happen to know these guys or you happen to be one of them, leave a comment. At some point in the next four or five years, when I finish this uh, 200 odd, hopefully someone has from these hometown hero sections. First up is Colin Hicks from Shetfield, England. So there we go. And uh, he cites Steve Vai and Vernon Reed as major influences. There you go, man. Sheffield, England. Stephen Robinson from Syracuse, New York. He's a Zeppelin head. And uh, loves Jeff Beck and Alan Holdsworth. Yeah, Steve Robinson. So Steve Robinson is... That guy. And Mark Sora, Dayton, Ohio. My music is too personal. I can't see myself playing at a Holiday Inn bar. Uh, let's see, where is his... Alan Holdsworth and uh, Bill Connors are his influences. So there you go. Mark Sora, Steve Robinson, and Colin Hicks. Let me know if you know them or uh, if you are them. Hopefully they're all still playing. That's a good one there for Jimmy. Excellent ad there. Those PRS ads really did make you want those guitars. Look at that. Something wrong if you don't want that guitar. Beautiful. Warwick Thumb Bass. Shout out to Mickey A there. 
equipment, ads. Now you're back into uh, some lessons. That's a that's a great um, yeah. I might have to I'll do that one sooner rather than later too. I'm trying not to uh, do all the cool ones at, at the start too. I'm trying to uh, spread out some of the crappier magazines. You know, yeah, so there you go. you got Red Beach. used to have a uh, column. So it's Stu Ham. Frank Hannon. I'll have to check these uh, from around from 1990 to see how long he had an um, article there. Or if it was just for um, one episode. Scott Henderson. And a uh, Richie one. He had he had a uh, column for a while, actually, in Guitar World, which was pretty cool. Like I said, I loved his first album. I can, I'll still listen to it every now and then. Now, let's see how this transcription looks compared to last week's absolute eye garbage that Guitar UK presented. Here we go. So a transcription of music that flows from one page to another and surprise, surprise, on the next pages as well. And keeps going. And keeps going. And that's it, right? And it finishes, that, no ads. No ads. The Pommy one would have had ads on every other page, which is, it was just ridiculous. I think I really only ever paid for one of those Pommy ones full price. The rest I got um, second hand. But like I said, I kind of, they're one of those ones when you go pick it up too. You, you, you're already kind of regretting that you're going to go and look through this stupid thing. But the ones I've got, that I'll, you know, at least I've got the one with uh, Zappa and the one with Steve Vai is not bad either. But um, yeah, other than that, they're, they're garbage. And then you've got the marketplace at the end. That's what you want. Excellent Hamer ad, that one, with Vernon Reed. And this one did have a poster, Jeff Healy, of the three guys. I know I've got it somewhere, and I know I saw it when, uh, when we were moving, because on the other side is um, Birdland. What's his name's Birdland? Ted Nugent's Birdland. So... I have to find that poster. I don't remember ever having a poster up of, of them. I've had lots of posters up of guitar players, but I don't ever remember having that one up, so I don't know where it went. But it's definitely not in there, and uh, I know it's somewhere because I've seen it recently in the last few years. Somewhere it's, it's, it's hiding. I'll have to find it. But anyway, there you go. So there is a, a nice little makeup for last week's one. This is an excellent, excellent... Um, this is probably one of my favourite issues of any of the guitar mags. It's still funny. The, the interview with these three guys is actually pretty funny too. They're, they're pretty hilarious. They don't take themselves seriously at all. And um, it's probably my top five. I've read this so many times. I take these to lunch at work all the time. You know, I, I, I would reread these all the time. And I have reread this one. And I just reread it again re recently. So there you go. They're worth keeping. Because you never know when the apocalypse is going to come and you're going to need something to read in the backyard instead of being bored. And there's only so much guitar playing you can do. You can't really play guitar for 16 hours a day. Sometimes you need to read something. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in again to uh, Guitar Mag Weekly. And until next time, stay cool, stay grooving. Rock your socks off. Yeah!